Sete Coins. Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Femi Ajibadi. I'm the Legal Officer of Citizens Gave Foundation for Social Justice. Uh, first of all, I would like to say, and SAS and police brutality, it's a it's a thing of joy to see us young people uh, unite with one purpose. It's, it's exhilarating, it's exciting, and I think we need to keep it up. We need to uh, fight the good fight and uh, Keep up the struggle until we achieve our aims and objective, and that is ending SARS, ending police brutality. And uh, this morning, we would like to discuss briefly uh, our fundamental rights, our fundamental rights abuse, how to protect them, how to go about uh, handling the situation when we are faced with uh, fundamental rights abuses police brutality, extortion. And I'm going to be sharing a few pointers for everyone in the simplest way possible. I will try to limit the legal jargons and, you know, speak in a very uh, simple way. Now I will be, you know, speaking by answering some few questions. Uh, and number one, is when faced with the possible police brutality scenario, what are the important things to do? I know a lot of really young persons have maybe been faced with uh, yes, sorry, uh, I think I just started. Instagram live uh, for for people on Instagram. Good morning. Uh, my name is Femi Ajibadi. I am a legal officer for Citizens Gallery Foundation, and I will be, like I said earlier, because I just started the uh, Instagram live. I will first say, and SAS and police brutality. I believe this the the the. The present scenario in Nigeria has been a long time coming. It is exhilarating. It is fantastic. It is so good and so refreshing to see we Nigerians unite with one purpose. And I, I'm trying to say now that we shouldn't relent. We should keep pushing until we achieve our aim. And what is our aim? Our aim is ending SARS, ending police brutality in its entirety, reforming the Nigerian police. Now that I've said that, uh, I'm just going to be discussing and you know, telling us briefly about fundamental rights and fundamental rights abuses, what we face every day, police brutality, extortion, intimidation. How do we protect ourselves? How do we go about handling these situations? And uh, I will be maybe guiding us through this uh, discussion through using some questions, maybe pointing out scenarios and all that. And uh, let me start by saying, okay, we all know about our fundamental rights. We've done a lot of uh, teachings, a lot of lectures, a lot of uh, discourse. Uh, the police, they, like any other person, they sense fear. The sense when they intimidated you, the, the, the sense weakness. So the first thing you have to do is keep calm. 
be confident. Good morning, officer. Good afternoon, officer. How can I help you, officer? You know, start with polite greetings. Try to calm up, calm down the situation. Keep calm. If they ask you a question, answer. It's not it's not phased. So they they, they, they they try to you know reduce the tempo. And obey all their instructions. Okay, they say come out of the vehicle, step out of the vehicle, open your boots, open your let me see your fire extinguisher, let me see your your papers, let me see. obey. Just obey. It's easy. And there is a reason why I'm actually saying all this, and I will re actually uh, talk about why it's very important to obey. Now, let's go to another question. What are the things to do when my, when my rights are being trampled upon? Okay, despite the fact that you've done all try to look around you. Of course, we know the modus operandi of these people. They they put on uh, a t-shirt, sometimes they just wear maybe one ripped jeans. They, there's no nothing to, to show that these are actually police officers or law enforcement agents. But however, try to take note of your surroundings. Gather all the information you can gather. Is there a landmark here? What is the color of their vehicle? What is the... Can I, can I recognize this person maybe when I see him again? Is there a nickname? Maybe sometimes they give themselves nicknames. They call themselves Roscoe. Some say Scorpion. Fine, it is maybe it looks, those names sound, you know, Togrish or something, or Juveline, but try to take note of all those names. Whatever they are trying to say, However, they are trying to speak. Maybe one person speaks with an accent, another person speaks with a drawl, you know. Little, little information like that. Try to gather this information. Maybe you have a phone. If you feel it is safe to record, please record. If you feel it is uh, safe to take pictures, please do take pictures. And. Um, if they are wearing a uniform, that's fine. That makes all the uh, work really very uh, easy. Just try to get the name, maybe, of the officer. Sometimes you might be lucky. They, they might come with a van, maybe a van that is actually the, 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 the name of the unit is actually inscribed on the van. You can snap the van or take a mental picture of the van. So gather all the information you can gather, mentally or maybe through your phone, you can snap a picture. And when you do that, retain those information in your possession, you are going to need it in the future. Then, if it, it, this might not be of any help, or it might just be of little help, but try to inform them of your right. Officer, you have no right to search my phone. Officer, you have no right to to rough handle me. I have rights under the law. You have no right to uncuff me. So you know, inform them of your rights. They might ignore, but that's fine. Just you know, inform them. It's it's important. Now, um, call your support system. You know, everybody has a support system. We have families, we have friends, we have uh, colleagues. Try to call them. Make sure that they know where you are, what is going on. That's very, that's very important. So, you know, we have had stories about police picking up people, taking them outside jurisdiction. Sometimes they pick up someone from Lagos, take that person to Abel Kota, take that person to... Uh, as far away as maybe in those states. So try to call your support system, try to make sure that people know where you are. It's very important. And uh, call your lawyer. It's very 
important that you have a lawyer. And if you don't have a lawyer, reach out to any organization that is in the space, non-governmental organization, civil society organization, or activists that you know, maybe on the timeline, maybe as your neighbor, as your friend, please call. It is very important that you call. And when you call your lawyer, your lawyer will be able to give you better advice, better, you know, uh, scenario, better ways to protect yourself. And okay, maybe you've been arrested and you've been taken to the station. It is very important that you stay silent. Whenever you don't understand the question, you have to stay silent. There have seen scenarios whereby people think maybe they can, you know, outsmart police officers or outsmart uh, security officials, maybe during interrogation or during questioning. The way the reason is uh, different from yours, at least at the point of that interrogation, what is in their mind at that particular point in time is how to how to rope you in, how to how to get how to back you in a corner, and a simple question can actually do that. And maybe you just answered honestly in a way that you think, okay, this is the truth, but they've actually gotten you to maybe incriminate yourself. So it's very important that you stay silent, that you do not talk or incriminate yourself. So please just stay silent until you have a lawyer uh, at the police station representing you. The lawyer will be able to guide you, to tell you what to say and what not to say. And uh, Yes, this scenario too comes up regularly, whereby uh, the police, they search, they, they, it's, it's one of the uh, uh, high points, uh, high, uh, one of the major reasons for the entire protest, the form police, uh, uh, um, struggle, so to speak. They stop and search. They, let me see your phone. Let me see your uh, laptop. You know. They do search, and uh, according to according to the law, according to the police act, they do have the power to search. However, it's subject to the reasonable man test. Now, what is the reasonable man test? The reasonable man test is not uh, what is reasonable to to officer officer Victor. Or uh, okay, this is what I think is reasonable to me because you know what is reasonable to each and every one of us is ambiguous. It is not uh, it is not uniform. I might see. Uh, a sociopath might see or psychopath might see murder as reasonable, whereas a sane person will see it as unreasonable. However, the reasonable man test is is objective, not subjective. It is what an average person would think is reasonable at a point in time. It's not subjected to what officer something would think. Okay, let, let, let me give you an example. Maybe someone is driving, and maybe during his, the, the, the police stopped uh, the person, and he was visibly fidgeting. He was, you know, shaking and intimidated, and he was. Uh, he didn't obey all the instructions that was given to him. Okay, what is in your, what is in your boots, uh, officer? I can't open my boots. Please just take this money. Let me, can you just take this money and let me go? You know, a reasonable man in that scenario will be suspicious that, okay, yes, something is going on. But he's not supposed to sack you. He's not supposed to intimidate you any longer. So that is what it, is, it means by being reasonable. And that is what the law envisages. And that is what the law prescribes the stop and search uh, power for. However, it has been abused 
we see a lot of officers today, the first thing they will tell you is, I have the power to search you. I have the power to do this. I have the power to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, they can even they can search your person. They have the power to search your person. And the person, the, if you are a guy, it's a guy that can search your person. And if you are a lady, the law prescribes that a lady is can search you. Only a lady can search you. I'm not, a, I'm not a police officer who is a man. Now, what about searching our properties, our phone, our laptops? They so should get a warrant because it's our private property. It is. Fine, the law gives them the right to search if they reasonably believe the, that an offense has been committed or it will help them solve a crime. But when it comes to our properties, they have to get a warrant. It is important that they get a warrant. Fine. I'm saying this according to what the law says. What is object obtainable in this in our society is different, way different. These people are not even, you know, a lot of them, I don't know. I don't know the kind of training they got. I don't know if they uh, are educated well enough to even know what the law says. And even if they are, I don't think they care. So all this that I'm saying, they might not even, you know, bother about it. They will say, hey, are you, are you telling me what to do? Are you, I beg, come out. I beg, forget that one. Bring your phone. They start getting aggressive. So what do you do? You have to obey. You have to comply for your safety and for posterity. You have to comply. If they say bring your phone, give them your phone, let them search. I have I inform them that this is in violation of my rights and I'm going to tender a complaint to appropriate authorities. I'm going to tell my lawyer and I'm going to make a complaint to your superiors. Then hand them the phone, let them do the search. If they are trying to extort you, like I said earlier, when I was talking about what to do if you're faced with a possible uh, case of uh, a possible scenario of abuse or extortion, you know, gather all the information you can. You will need it. Gather it. Call your lawyer. Call your support system. Call them. Do do this before they maybe switch off your phone or before they they, they seize the phone from you. And okay, fine. They've extorted you. They've, 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 uh, they've succeeded in searching your phone, taking you to the ATM, you know, withdrawing the last couple in your account, and they freed you. You can still get justice, you can still get recompense. All you have to do is utilize everything I've said earlier, and, you know, gather all the said information that I said and give it to your lawyer. Your lawyer will know the next step. So, now, like I said, I, I, I was saying, okay, maybe they are questioning, they are intimidating, you have the right to remain silent. In fact, you have the right to not say anything. You have the right to just keep quiet. Just remain mute, no matter what. They are not uh, obliged to speak. Just keep quiet. And sometimes they do this thing too. They, they, they arrest. They arrest in lieu. What do I mean by arrest in lieu? They... They arrest, maybe, for example, they arrest a sister in place of a brother. Or they arrest the, the mom instead of the son. They call it, a, when we arrest you, you will, you will find where your son is. You will, you will bring your son out. Yada, yada. You know, that is a barbaric way of maybe conducting an investigation. Ordinarily, in a sane and 
civilized society, the police is supposed to perfect their investigation, arrest after, then within 24 hours, charge the suspect to court. But in Nigeria, arrest first, then do investigation through intimidation and extortion and, you know, a whole lot of other vices. Now, the law has prohibited that. And if there is a way the police are trying to do that, there's a way they, or they've already done that, maybe they've arrested your, you or your uh, neighbor or your friend or family and lay off another person, you know, call your lawyer. Like I always say, call your lawyer, reach out to civil society organization like ours, reach out to any other civil society organization out there, reach out to activists on the timeline, on your Facebook feed, in your contacts, in your phone books, and all that. Make a phone call. And this set of people will make sure that uh, your, rights are, your rights are protected under the law. And uh, what I have to say is not much. The, the, the struggle is out there. We, we, we are we Nigerian youth who've risen up against uh, oppression into a thing of beauty, and I think we should keep it up. I think we should uh, end SARS. We should protest and uh, ask for a better police force. We should ask for an end to police brutality, and we should, at every point in time, remember what I have said, and you know, use it whenever we are faced with these kind of scenarios. I pray no, none of us uh, ever experience it, or if we do, let's just keep whatever I've said at the back of my mind. Uh, thank you for listening. It's been a pleasure uh, sharing these short tips with you guys. If you have any questions, you can DM us through our Twitter handle at Citizen Gavel and DM us through Instagram. And we are on Facebook. So if there are any questions relating to what I've said or questions relating to police brutality in general or even maybe relating to your own uh, experience, please just kindly contact us. Thank you so much for your time. I'm grateful. And let me say once again, and SARS and police brutality in Nigeria. Thank you.